Lesson 13, many vectors in one dimension. This is the start of chapter 2. And we did vectors a little bit in Science 10, so we won't go over this in great detail, but just to highlight some important pieces of information. So the first thing you need to know is the difference between scalar quantities and vector quantities. A scalar quantity just has magnitude. A vector quantity has magnitude and direction. So if I say I'm driving 50 kilometers an hour, then that's a scalar quantity. If I say I'm driving 50 kilometers an hour north, then that's a vector quantity because it has the added feature of direction. And vectors are drawn as arrows. Vector drawing rules. The vector is drawn pointing in the direction of the vector. And number two, the length of the vector is proportional to the magnitude of the measurement. And number three, a vector can be picked up and moved around in a vector diagram as long as when you place it in a new location, it is still pointing the same size and still pointing in the same direction. So just a couple of examples. If I say that this this is 50 kilometers an hour east, then that would probably be 100 kilometers an hour east. And this would be about 50 kilometers an hour west. All right, and then of course so we have north, south, east, west, up, down, left, right, and uh, any direction. And then of course we have diagonal directions, which we will we'll get to when we do two-dimensional vectors. Okay, so adding vectors in one dimension. The rule is you place the vectors tip to tail, and here is the tip. And there is the tail. So you place the vectors tip to tail. Okay, let's go on to page two, here we go. Sketch a diagram that shows you how you, you would add the following vectors A and B. So you're going to take the vectors and you're going to place them tip to tail, and then the resultant vector, in other words, what happens when you add these two vectors, you place a, another vector, which is tail, tail, tip, tip, which may not make sense to you right now. But when I do an example, it should make sense. So we're going to kind of skip this as number two. So sketch the resultant of the addition of two vectors in example one. So in example one, we're going to place them tip to tail. There's A, there's B. So you can say it's tip to tail, right, right here. Tip to tail. And then the resultant goes from tail, tail, tip, tip. So I'm just going to draw in this diagram, even though I should have done number two. There it is, tail, tail. Tip, tip. Right, and that's how you add vectors. You place them, you place the all the vectors you're adding, tail, tip to tail, and then the resultant vector always goes tail, tail, tip, tip. Okay, so we've just done number two. Um, and then we'll we'll spend a little time on the subtracting vectors in one dimension. Um, subtracting vectors is something we do very infrequently, but we really want to think of it as not subtracting. Uh, just adding something with a negative sign. So in mathematics, right here, it says we can take a minus b and simply change it to a plus negative b. And anytime we make a vector negative, we simply change this direction to the exact opposite. Right? So in this example here, sketch the, the um, diagram of a minus b. Here's a. And there's b, but we want to change it to a plus negative b. Which means a stays the same, but now negative b becomes negative 
that one there. And so now when we do, when we place these tail, tip to tail, and then the resultant tail, tail, tip, tip, it ends up looking like this. I'm just going to put an R there for resultant, and as you can see, we still have that tip to tail right here. And then we have tail, tail, tip, tip. Tail, tail, tip, tip. So it looks a little different, but we've um, done exactly the same thing that we've done in the previous examples. So that's subtracting vectors, and that is the end of this lesson.